Rogers. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero conversation I'm very excited to have with me, Alicia Wilson, who is the Deputy General Manager of Operations at Somerville Commissioners of Public Works. So how are you doing today, Alicia? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me today. Oh, I'm so excited to have you. And, and you know, we came out there. This is actually one that I, I, I've been to your site. I was very blessed to be able to go out there and, and talk with Micah and your team and, and learn about some of the cool projects you do. So first of all, Thought just I love the area Somerville. That's just a really cool area for, to to visit for those that are listening to go check it out. Definitely go down there. But for you, I'm curious about your journey. What led you to Somerville? Well, I was born and raised in Somerville. Uh, okay. My mother was born and raised in Somerville, and my father is from um, neighboring Charleston. So I've uh, got a Low Country family. We call this area of South Carolina the Low Country. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did end up uh, going to the upstate for a little while, but I had to return home after a while. <laughs> oh, yeah. So where, where did you go to school at? I went to Clemson University um, okay. in the northwest corner of South Carolina in the foothills. So a lot different territory than the, the coastal region we're in here. No doubt. Well, I mean, you've had a pretty good run at some, at some football seasons in here lately, haven't you? Oh, definitely. Go Tigers. <laughs> Absolutely. Do you have any any run-ins with uh, any of the USC people there at uh, tr- at Somerville? I'm greatly outnumbered here uh, in the Low Country. <laughs> Very lots of Gamecock fans, um, but you know, lately, in the last couple of years, they haven't had a whole lot to say. It's they've been kind of humble. Right, right. That's just true. But I mean, they've been. I always hear that there's a lot of chirping around the women's basketball, so I get that. But you know, the football season, they usually be they're, they're a little bit quieter. Yeah, I, I, you know, hopefully they'll get better. So my husband coaches high school football, so we're always looking at the in-state kids that have done well, and if they go to an in-state school like South Carolina, we're pulling for those guys to to do well, <laughs> even if they're on the opposing team. Very cool. Now, now, what did you study at Clemson? I studied agricultural engineering, um, which is a bit unusual. Um, that okay. has different. Uh, it had at the time different areas of study, and so my emphasis area was biotechnology engineering. Um, mm-hmm. That's now a full major called biosystems engineering at Clemson. Okay. So from from there, you know, when you graduated, did you go straight into the to the you know, water, waste, water world, or did you go other places first? I had a little stop in um, environmental engineering. I worked for a company that managed um, hazardous waste disposal briefly, and then I ended up working in chemical manufacturing as an environmental engineer, and uh, my responsibilities included air quality, uh, stormwater, wastewater treatment, um, hazardous waste disposal, solid waste disposal, all kinds of different things in, that were um, needed in an industrial environment. So I worked for Millican and Company in the upstate for about uh, six years. Okay. And then that then that leads you to Somerville after that? Not quite. So then Not quite. Uh, I was in the Spartanburg area in the upstate of South Carolina, uh, and I started working for Spartanburg Water. I spent about five years there. My husband and I both got job opportunities in the Charleston area um, at the same time. It felt like a little bit of divine intervention. So we moved here to Somerville, and um, I worked at Charleston Water for another five years. And then um, the opportunity came up in Somerville. I I loved working at both Spartanburg and Charleston, but I just kept getting the opportunity to move a little closer to, to home um, and so when the opportunity came up at Somerville, I just, I, I couldn't resist. So now I work two miles from where I live, so I can't get any closer. This is, oh. this is it for me. <laughs> and I really love it. Well, that is great. And so again, you're one of our first interviews that we've ever had with somebody in this industry. So I'm curious from your standpoint, you know, what are some of the greatest challenges that you're seeing right now for, for, you know, now and into the future? Wow. That's a great question. Um, So some of the biggest challenges for us in the industry are the um, continuing regulatory changes that come um, from the state and the federal government and making sure that we are ready to be in compliance with those changes. Um, Something like maybe lead and copper rules that are coming out that have a lot more stringent um, regulations for a good cause for keeping the public um, healthy 
and safe, but we have to make sure we've got all of our um, ducks in a row to make sure we comply with those regulations accurately. So regulatory um, issues are always changing and something we always keep up with. And regulations are a good thing for keeping the population safe and healthy. Right. Is, is, are, is anything like capacity, is that, is that a challenge or is that pretty much engineered into the way these, these plants and these operations are, are you know, designed? Many, many um, utilities do have some capacity challenges with uh, the growth of an area going growing faster than you can keep up with the infrastructure. Somerville mm-hmm. Commissioners of Public Works um, serves a lot of the town of Somerville, but also some out of town areas. And we're also in three counties, even though we're in oh. a very pretty small area, we have a small service area, but our service area is almost completely built out. So we have a good grasp on what we're going to need capacity wise. And we're, uh, we are in good shape. So fortunately that's not really a concern for us, but it is for many, many municipalities. Our neighboring Berkeley County is just exploding with growth. And I think that they're, um, they're having to, I don't think they're struggling, but I think that's something that is on their radar all the time to make sure they're keeping up with, with that growth. I, t- I totally get it because, first of all, it's a beautiful part of the world. So, I mean, I, I, I get why so many people want to move down to where, you know, where you're located, for sure. And we do sell water to a neighboring um, utility that is growing. So, as far as where we see growth, we're making sure that we're going to have enough capacity of drinking water to provide to that neighboring utility for their growing population. So, it's a good thing that, you know, we yeah. always want to have an, an, uh, a good income source. So, that growth Absolutely. is going to help us. Very good. Very good. Now, I'm curious, for someone in the water, wastewater industry, there may be listeners out there thinking, Alicia, that they're just, they have this, this in their mind, this perception of what, of what it is you do or what a water plan is or what a wastewater plan is. And it, it may, who knows? Give me a common myth and then go ahead and debunk that because I'd really like to learn more about what do you think a common myths are for your industry and, and, and what the truth really is. Well, I think a lot of people don't really think about where their water goes when they flush the toilet or they wash their laundry or do the dishwasher. It it just isn't something that people think about. And in a in a sense, we don't want them to because we want to be a uh, very reliable source for them to where they don't have to think about it when they turn on their water or they they flush their toilet. But people really don't think about what we do. And one thing I try to tell students who come in the plant is a list of the different types of professionals we have in our industry, whether it's civil engineers or electricians, um, pump and motor uh, mechanics, maintenance mechanics, diesel mechanics. Um, There's a lot of different professional um, type of positions in our industry, uh, computers, lots of computer stuff, um, chemists, um, engineers, all kinds of things. So I think people just think it's some people shoveling stuff around and that, uh, ditch digging or something like that. And, and there's really a lot of, um, of science and, uh, education needed for it. We also have a very stringent operator license, and um, professional licensing industry where you have to demonstrate knowledge through testing and also demonstrate your uh, experience level and have certain licenses in order to operate these facilities. So I think that's probably the biggest, the biggest thing. Oh, oh for sure. So, I mean, it sounds like these, there's, so there's different levels of licensing and things like that there that you can obtain. Yes. Um, so for operators at a, either a water treatment plant or a wastewater treatment plant in South Carolina, there's four levels, D being the lowest, then C, B, and A. And mm-hmm. so you have to pass an exam and also um, have a, a certain number of years experience to obtain those licenses. And our permit requires that we have a B operator on site daily to uh, every day to make sure the process is running correctly. And then different treatment plants have different requirements. Oh, wow. So that's, I guess that person needs to be, so is that 24 seven, somebody needs to be there with a B license or just no, during operating hours? For hours, because we're a fairly uh, a smaller system, we work eight hours a day, five days a week. And then um, an operator comes in for two hours on Saturday and two hours for sun on Sunday 
to take some samples, check things, make sure everything is secure and running running properly. So it is required that a person be on site for some amount of time every day. Now for a water treatment plant for drinking water, we purchase our drinking water from uh, Santee Cooper, um, mm-hmm. a nearby uh, from a nearby town. They are required to have 24 hour staffing at a water treatment plant, which makes sense um, mm-hmm. because it's, you know, su- such more of a public health concern to have a, uh, to have fresh, clean drinking water. Mm-hmm. Well, what's something that people just may not even think about or, or know a random fact about the water wastewater industry? Anything that comes to mind? One thing that comes to mind that surprises people or surprises me is that people don't know where their water comes from. Um, uh, in, in several of the utilities I've worked for, like where um, ours comes from Lake Moultrie, uh, over in Monk's Corner, and then it is piped over to Somerville. Um, it's also piped to Berkeley County, the city of Goose Creek, and the town of Monk's Corner. And so I don't know, uh, people don't think about it, but, um, you know, our, our water does come from a nearby lake, and it's important to keep that water resource clean and, and protected. Um, and then they don't know where that wastewater treatment, uh, treated wastewater is discharged. And for us, it's at the Ashley River, um, and uh, which is a, a very popular recreation point in our area. Um, and so, uh, you know, where it comes from, where it goes, that's something that we treat about 5 million gallons a day of wastewater. Um, our capacity is 10 million gallons a day. And then the Lake Moultrie water plant where we buy our drinking water can treat up to uh, 40 million gallons a day. Uh, oh, wow. it's, a, it's a lot, a lot of water. Um, so probably the quantity of what we do and collect and pump and treat, um, and then where those sources are, um, surprise people. I'm sure. Definitely. It's, it's surprising numbers right there. Absolutely. So how about give somebody, if you're trying to find people or encourage them to consider the water wastewater industry, you know, for their career, what advice are you going to give them? What would you offer up? Well, um, I, th- I really like working for a public utility for several reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, one is that I really do have a sense of serving the community. It's very important to me to protect the Ashley River that is such a big part of our community. And, uh, and, and like I mentioned, is a, a good public resource um, for recreation that we use. So there's that um, need and uh, feeling of, of accomplishing something that thing that gets you up in the morning and gets you going is that we're doing a a good job and being good stewards for that river and also making sure that the drinking water we provide to our customers is safe and clean. So that, that gives me um, a lot of purpose. Um, That's one thing I like about it. Engineers and chemists and other people, like I mentioned before, can probably make more money not working for a public utility, but maybe in manufacturing or something like that. But uh, we have great job security. Everybody's always using water. Um, and then we also have some great state benefits. So uh, a lot of people like myself have decided that, you know, we also don't have to travel or do anything, uh, you know, fill out uh, expense reports and sales and do things like that. So a lot of people like me probably could work for an engineering company or something else, but we like the fact that we're working for our community and that mm-hmm. we can come home every night, um, and that we have great job security. So I, that's why I really like working for a utility. Hey, they're all great points. And then still at the, at the end of the day, I remember when I, when I was on site with Michael, a couple of things he was telling me is that it's always changing. Like the dynamics of the plant are never the same. So you're constantly having to adjust the plant to what's coming in. So it's also, it's not like it's, it's, it's mundane either. It sounds like there's always, you know, new projects and new, new opportunities to learn as well. That's exactly right. And and one thing that people don't realize about a wastewater treatment system is that it's a biological system. It's a living system. It's basically farmed my, microbial organisms. So if that system gets damaged, if we, if we kill those microorganisms from, from some kind of a toxic event, let's say somebody dumps something into a manhole that's not supposed to go to our treatment system, they might kill off our microbial population and we won't be able to treat water for about two two weeks until we can recover. And so that's, um, 
it's not easy to operate a biological system for wastewater treatment because um, the microorganisms are finicky and we have to make sure we keep them fed a steady diet of the right things and then they will do their job and, and treat the water like they're supposed to. That's really cool. So, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming there's samples consistently being taken, analyzed, checked, and then, and then adjustments from there. That's correct. We have our own lab. And so we check, uh, we check and monitor different parameters every day to make sure things are operating correctly. And then when you make changes, if you make too many changes at one time, you can really disrupt the system and then you don't know exactly what you did to cause the disruption. Mm. So we have to be very careful about making changes slowly and one at a time. Um, it makes it, it makes it interesting. Um, we can actually take samples of our microorganisms, put them under the microscope and check what kind of different microorganisms we have to tell if our system's healthy or not. That's pretty cool. So I guess you don't want to overshoot with a, with an adjustment. Correct. Yeah. Everything's very slow and deliberate. Gotcha. Okay. Very cool. Now I'm, I'm curious now too, for, for your industry specifically, it, is there any interns or mentors or, or opportunities to, to take younger people and, and grow them and mold them into, you know, operators that cl- like a class A, I think you said it was the top level operator. So how does that look like mentorship or, or, or those types of programs? We often hire um, folks uh, straight into our industry without experience. And then we, um, mentor them. We'll have some different kinds of training. We'll help them get through their exams um, and uh, coach them through all of that to get their licenses. Um, oh, so, okay. Yeah, we do that. I would like to work in the future more with some high school students to be able to get them to intern, um, but we haven't gotten there yet. But it's a good opportunity to show them our industry and show that there are you know, long-term career opportunities in our industry. Mm-hmm. Well, absolutely. I mean, do, do you guys do like uh, tours? So if, if public wants to come and do a tour, is that available? We do. Usually um, high school and middle school is the, are the okay. best age ranges. Uh, when, when they get younger than that, they really aren't sure exactly what's going on. And, that's right. That's uh, and right. There's a safety component too. Um, yeah. We don't want people running around an industrial facility. But yeah, usually when we have tour groups, um, we also have Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts come. And okay. the parents or the chaperones are just as fascinated as the kids. They all just say, I have no, I had no idea that this was so elaborate or, or complex and that it's a microbial system and, and, and everything, because like I said before, people just don't really think about it. So, right. um, yeah, it's fun to see it, You have to get through the ooh factor first, you know, at first it's, ew, you know, and it's, it's wastewater. But once we get past that, um, and our, we have a very clean plant that doesn't have a lot of odor, so um, it's not that part's not too distracting. But they really understand that hey, there's a lot to this. There's a lot of instrumentation and electrical mm-hmm. needs, and uh, lots of laboratory testing, um, and and that sort of thing. And I do try to emphasize the different type of careers and the different types of people that we need in order to make our facility operate. Yeah. And I, I like the ooh factor. Got to get past that. Got to get past that ooh factor. <laughs> Some people don't. Some people we hire, you know, after a week, they say, this is this is not for me. And we understand it. Uh, right. We understand that. <laughs> well, I'm curious from your, from your standpoint, uh, when are you the happiest? So what work are you doing when, you, when you're there at Somerville and you're, you're, you're the, the general manager? What work are you doing that brings you the most joy? I like to walk around the plant. And uh, I often do that at the end of the day when most of the staff has left and I just take some time to walk around and see how things are going, um, take in all of the different sites and, and everything and, and just it's calm and um, our operators do a really good job of keeping our facility clean. So that's, that's my favorite time is to just sort of take in what's going on and, um, and be outside, especially on a nice day like today uh, and, and just study everything and get, get a good, um, a, a good analysis of what's going on. Okay. I mean, it sounds like that's a sense of, you have a lot of pride in what you're doing. My staff has a lot of pride in what they do and that makes me happy. Um, they really do. Uh, they, they take their job seriously. Well, I think it's a reflective of leadership too. So hats off to you. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. So now let's talk about things outside of the plant. Okay. I like to, I like to learn a little bit, a little bit about you as a person. So any hobbies, anything you like doing for fun? Well, I'm a mom of two teenage girls, so my time for myself is a little limited, but I do love to read and I like to cross stitch. Okay. Okay. Reading and cross stitching. Now, how, uh, we'd love to learn about family too. So you have two teenage girls. How old are they exactly? I have a 17 year old daughter who is going to graduate in about a month and go to Uh-oh. Clemson University. Um, and All right. And then I have an eighth grader. She's just turned 14, um, who's going to head to high school next year. My husband um, teaches at the same high school that my kids attend. Oh, um, cool. What does he teach? He teaches, he teaches chemistry. Um, oh, okay. And he coaches offensive line. Okay. So he's a, he, he teaches chemistry and, and coaches offensive lines. He's a tough guy and smart. So you got to watch those guys, right? I know, right? You know, at <laughs> first you think he's just a, a dumb jock and then you start peeling those layers. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's awesome. Well, it sounds like you guys got a lot going on there for sure. Sounds like a wonderful family. And I'm assuming is everybody is from, is still in the area in Somerville there? Yes, I actually live next door to my parents, which had you asked me that at age 18, if I would do that, no way. But it's been right. very nice because my parents have been able to help me and my husband um, with my daughters and getting them to where they need to be while we were working in. Then we're able to help them as well. So it's 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 nice to be right next door. And then my in-laws, um, spend a lot of time in Somerville as well. Oh, okay. Well, that's great. I mean, family is important. So, uh, we, we, we love learning about family too. So thank you for sharing with us there. Sure. Now I'm curious for you, any, anything books, podcasts, or YouTube channel, just that you enjoy consuming. And that could be stuff just for personal development or growth or just for fun, or it could be professional type stuff. But I'm just curious what, 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 what do you find value in? I listen to podcasts all the time. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, in the car, basically, uh, if I'm in the car. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I like listening to, um, some storytelling kind of podcasts. Um, one's called snap judgment. Um, I like a podcast called reply all, uh, I like a podcast out of, uh, San Quentin in California called, um, reply uh, No, not reply all. What is it called? Um, Ear Hustle. Ear Hustle is a great Ear Hustle. Um, and so those are great distractions while I'm going from one place to another, picking up somebody, dropping somebody off. Um, I love my podcasts. And then I also. So what listen- are they about? I'm curious. Like, I mean, what, what's the what's the theme behind a couple of those? Oh, sure. Well, the, the Ear Hustle um, is about life in San Quentin prison. And it's not, um, it, 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 that sounds really depressing, but it just really shows you kind of an, uh, idea of what it's like on a daily basis, whether it's going to the chow hall or what it's like to uh, be on lockdown or, or, and it can be a a little bit depressing, but I find it just fascinating. I don't, I don't know why. And then um, snap judgment is usually different people telling their, their stories about um, just a portion of their life or something that happened in their life. And my husband tends to like more interviews with um, like celebrity interviews and, and mm-hmm. I'm more on the the storytelling. Okay. Sides. Okay. But, cool. Yeah. Um, that's uh, that's what keeps me going in the in the car. Very good. In any books or anything? Yeah, I've been. Um, I actually started looking up uh, books that my kids have been reading because in high school, when I read books, I read them because I had to, and so I've gone back to some of those types of books and said, well, what, what did you guys like? And when you were in seventh grade or 10th grade and, and they're giving me names of books that they like. So I just finished a really interesting one called the glass castle. Um, okay. and, uh, I finished that one today. It was really good. My daughter read it in 10th grade and she recommended it to me. All right. And it's very good. It's always cool when you can, can connect with your kids like that, you know, so that's, that's awesome. Absolutely. I take All right, every, well, every chance I can get. It's it's difficult to connect with those teenagers. <laughs> yeah, mine are eleven and nine. I am not looking forward to those days, but uh, they're slowly coming. And I have girls as well, so okay. uh, we'll see. We'll yeah. see what happens. But I do have an eighth month, uh, an eight month old as well, so I have a long way to go with her. Oh so. <laughs> wow! Yeah. Well, congratulations. It's um, hard to believe. Everybody says it, but how how fast time goes? I I just yeah. can't believe we're 
near uh, graduation. Yes, um, unbelievable. And congratulations on that as well. So, Thank you. So, uh, Alicia, what we do in the hero episodes, we have the lightning round. Okay, so I'm just going to fire up off a bunch of random questions. You can come back as quick as you can which, with, with whatever comes to mind, okay? Okay, I'm ready. All right, cool. Favorite food? Boiled peanuts. Boiled peanuts. Now, I have never had anybody say that. Okay, has it always been boiled peanuts? Always. Always been boiled peanuts. I just love them. You just love them. Okay. How about adult beverage? Guinness. Guinness. So, uh, some boiled peanuts and a Guinness and you're a happy. Draft. Got it. Yeah, a draft Guinness. Yes. That sounds... Oh, that sounds good. Let's go do that after this podcast. That sounds Let's good. do it. Let's right. do it. Let's do it. Awesome. Now, what's uh, what's your favorite app on your phone? TikTok. I love watching TikTok with my youngest daughter. We just, a lot, most of them are animal videos and we just laugh and laugh and laugh. It's, it's amazing too. Like you can literally just lose hours on that app if you're not careful. You, you know, absolutely time, can. Yes. Yeah. Time just goes. But anyway, <laughs> what's, what's on your nightstand? <laughs> um, stuffed animals of baby Yoda that my kids have given me. I, I like <laughs> I'm a Star Wars okay. geek. That's I, I, that's the honest answer. I tried. I was thinking, well, come up with something better than that. But the honest <laughs> truth is that I have um, Baby Yoda stuffed animals next to my bed. Okay, so I can go straight to the favorite movie. Oh, uh, Raising Arizona. Oh, okay, okay. Did you ever All see right. that back in like '87? Uh, Nicholas Cage. Mm -mm. It was mm -mm. just hilarious. Okay. All right. I was I thought you'd go Star Wars. No. Nope, all right, cool. So, what's your favorite sports team? Clemson Tigers. Yeah, I knew. I set you. I knew it was coming there. Yeah. All right, what's a uh, what's a guilty pleasure? Um, ice cream. Ooh, any flavors? Yeah, bride's cake by uh, bride's uh, cake. Bluebell. Bluebell bride's cake. Yes. Okay, I'll we'll have to try that. I'll have to try that one. So that, that that's top notch, huh? It's like an almond flavor with a cream cheese icing in it. <sighs> It's, it's, it's amazing. Okay. Fine. All right. It's good. Yep. I, I'm headed to the grocery store when we finish this interview. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> what's the, what's one place you, you got to go that you've never been to before? Uh, Paris. Okay. And what's the coolest place you've ever been? Uh, Hawaii, the Island of Kauai in, uh, oh, in the beautiful yeah. state of Hawaii. It's just, I hope to go back one day. Yeah, I've never been to Kauai. We went, we went to Maui, but I've never been to Kauai. But when I go back, I want to go to that island because they say it's the most scenic. So I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's called the Garden Island. There's a, a mm -hmm. tunnels beach, and there's um, you can swim uh, in the coral reef, and it's just, it's just gorgeous. That's awesome. That's awesome. So last question, Alicia: Dogs or cats? Doggies. Okay, thank you. All right. So, what any kinds of dogs? We um, have had miniature schnauzers um, in the past, oh, okay. uh, which can be stubborn, but very loving at the same time. But uh, one of my favorite things on TikTok is to follow an uh, um, Italian greyhound named Tika. So I'm kind of leaning towards the Italian greyhounds right now. Okay. Well, I have a giant schnauzer. So. Oh, wow. So, yep, yeah, I got a giant. and He is a giant, but uh, he's awesome. But uh, They're so smart. I, Oh, they're smart. They're awesome. They're great, you know, guard dogs, protectors of the family, things like that. So if I ever have to go out of town, like he's got, he's on lockdown, but, uh, but yeah, I What's mean, his just name? Maddox, Maddox, Maddox. Greg after, Maddox. Greg, after Greg Maddox, Greg Maddox, go Braves. Yes. Yes. That's it. Go Braves. So good deal. I finally found somebody who had a, who has a schnauzer and we'll, we'll call that the schnauzer. So good deal. Awesome. <laughs> Well, listen, this has been a lot of fun getting to know you. And I tell you, we call it the Eco Ask Why Show, and, it's, and we always wrap up with the why. So if somebody wants to know, come up and say, you know, Alicia, what is your why? What are you going to tell them? Professionally, it is me, uh, keeping the environment clean, um, providing safe drinking water to our customers, and keeping our Ashley River area clean for, for our community. And then, of course, my personal why has to be my family. Um, they are great supporters of me, and um, I, uh, I just love being with them. So they're definitely my why. Great answers. And I tell you what, you're our hero. So thank you so much, Alicia, for, for joining, for sharing your story, and just uh, for being a part of Eco Ask Why. I hope you enjoyed it. Well, thank you so much. I'm really honored to be here, and it was my pleasure.
Oh, you have a great day. You too. And that was a fun conversation with Alicia. Tell you what, you know, finally being able to talk to someone in the water wastewater industry and just all the different things, types of things that she's involved with and the different types of people. And, you know, she's living in a, in a plant that's actually living. <laughs> that was pretty cool just to hear that. So, so much insight she, that she shared there. So be sure to check out the show notes. You'll be able to connect direct, directly with, with what they're doing there at Somerville. Check that out. I highly encourage you, if you're in the area, schedule, give them a call. Stop by. Personally, me, our team, we went there, and it was a phenomenal trip. I had a lot of fun, and it's just a beautiful part of the world. So, again, if you're in the Somerville, South Carolina area, go check it out. Now, we still want your war stories. We want the funny stuff, the bad stuff, the stuff that you hope no one ever finds out. Guess what? We won't tell. Okay. Well, we'll tell everybody, but we won't tell who told us. How about that? Okay. So go to the show notes, click on the links. You can connect with us directly. You know, you can send us an email. You can send us an audio message. You can just send us a note to say, hey, give me a call and we'll call you on an anonymous line. And you, want, you know, we'll protect, we'll protect the innocent and you can tell us a story. Whatever is the best way for you. We just want to get those stories. So check it, give us, give us, reach out to us, and we look forward to hearing from you. Now, if you're enjoying Eco Ask Why, give us a like, give us a comment. That type of stuff really makes a difference. Also, send a text message to a friend. You know, this was a fun conversation with Alicia. Send it to someone else who may enjoy hearing her story. So we hope everyone has a great week. And remember, keep asking why.